Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tinnitus TV. Today I am talking to Liam Cormier from Cancer Bats. You know, punk is a young man's game for the most part, but Cancer Bats are definitely an exception to that rule. This Toronto hardcore outfit have been doing their thing for nearly 18 years now, and they still show no signs of slowing down. Even the recent loss of co-founding guitarist Scott Middleton didn't stop them. Bassist Jay Schwartzer simply strapped on a six-string, stepped into the breach, and the Bats went back to work writing and recording their new seventh album, Psychic Jailbreak. Cut in their second home of Winnipeg, it's every bit as relentless and unstoppable as Cancer Bats themselves, smacking you right between the eyes with another high-voltage, high-velocity amalgam of roiling mosh pit intensity, sludgy metal riffage, and frontman Liam Cormier's sinister, shredded vocals. A few weeks before Psychic Jailbreak escaped into the world, Liam zoomed in from his home in Halifax to talk about growing up in punk, his off-road, off-stage pursuits, what the future holds for Cancer Bats, and plenty more. Enjoy. Well, greetings from your second home of Winnipeg. Yeah. Um, and thanks also for writing one of the best Win Winnipeg songs ever. Oh, yeah, Winterbag. <laughs> it's a keeper. It's a keeper. Yeah, what I love it. It's it's one of my favorite songs off the last record. When are you guys just going to bite the bullet and move here for good? Well, Mikey, our drummer, lives in Winnipeg, right. but yeah. I moved to Halifax, so I'm even further. Halifax? Yeah, I moved to Nova Scotia in 2019, uh, right. right before. I, I've been coming out here a lot because um, of the clothing brand that I do, the Treadwell Clothing. Right. Um, there was lots of stores that like sold my stuff. So I was coming on these sales trips and also there's just so much like motorcycling, dirt biking, like there's a huge culture for it. Um, and then when I was on one of those trips, I like met my now girlfriend. Hmm. And so I was like, Oh, and I, that like in 2019, I was like basically living in Halifax without like officially moving there. And then at the end of the year, I was like, I'm just gonna live here. This yeah, place well, is cooler than Toronto. Yeah, well, love and money. I mean, you can't, you know. Yeah, it all makes sense. Beautiful landscape. Yeah, so it's been, yeah, it's been really fun being here. Cool. Uh, but, and also you're heading out on tour with Comeback Kid, which could not <laughs> yeah. be, I mean, could not be a more Winnipeg lineup. You're going to have yeah, like yeah. A, bigger like... four reunions in the break or what? <laughs> I, I would love, I don't know if I could like get that going, but for them or for us to like all play a figure four cover together. There you go. Probably won't happen, but maybe we'll play some figure four in between both bands at the park. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well, everybody looks forward to that. Um, and everybody I'm pretty sure is pretty, pretty stoked about the new album, um, which I yeah. heard and, and, and love, but your first album without Scott, that's a, that's a huge change. Um, when that came up, you guys must have considered a lot of options, um, including maybe calling it a day, or was that never even on the table? No, that was never on the table, because we had already written more than half of the album mm -hmm. uh, with just the three of us hmm. by the time that Scott had kind of told us like he was um, not feeling it. And for us, we kind of like, had, like we're getting that impression because we just weren't hearing from him mm -hmm. um but we were having a great time like you know working on the songs and being really excited and jay had already been contributing a lot guitar wise he wrote like a lot of spark uh and had written a lot of stuff on um searching for zero so we were already kind of like a two guitar band in terms of like the writing process so in a lot of ways, we were just like, yeah, like Scott can add his parts when he has like more time. Like we knew that he was moving and he was building a new studio. Uh, but then as we were like kind of getting closer, we were just like, what's what's actually happening? <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, you know what? Like I'm super busy with my family, super busy with the studio. And like, I wish you guys all the best. And we were like, oh, OK, great. Like it was a real like easy kind of like transition. Um, and then Jay just like fully stepped up because he was kind of like, okay, I'll just write all the second guitar parts and all the solos and then we're done. We were like, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Yeah, I think in some ways it's kind of easier um, 
like if you're the main person kind of like handling the ideas i think you already know where the song's going so right. to like for jay i mean i say that like jay did all the work so <laughs> but i think in some ways like yeah it was like a little bit um like smoother because then he already knows how all the transitions go it's not like trying to add a different idea on top of it so it was yeah it was really cool but kudos to jay because he really stepped up oh yeah obviously and and it's not like you go uh oh this this album is is you know like totally different from the last album or you miss mm. you know and not you know not yeah, to well, and anybody, I, I think but that's... It, it's a real smooth transition in terms of yeah. you know, sounding like you guys, but it's got a, it's got a real kind of, um, even more kind of a, of a, of an intensity and a punch, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, love I, I love yeah. how like heavy and hard hitting it is. Yeah. Um, I think in a lot of ways too, like, I hope it kind of like helps people to realize too, how much of like a collective Cancer Bats was mm -hmm. as well in that like yeah a lot of people are like man th these guitars don't sound like too far off and you're like because jay we've always been saying like jay's been writing a ton of songs that mm. like everyone like knows and loves but i think sometimes everyone has like their own ideas about like a band so mm. until you like see it without that person it's like hard to like kind of look at it from a different perspective but yeah i mean for us too like the the hard hitting side of it I think was like really just like being amped, like having a lot of energy, having a lot of like maybe pent up kind of like we sure. haven't, you know, been playing heavy music or going to any heavy shows uh, in like two years. So when it came to like being in the studio, we were just like, yes, like let's, <laughs> like, let's make all these songs like slam was basically our MO. Well, mission accomplished. Um, it must have been weird though recording uh, i mean we, I, i'm presuming if you guys would normally just kind of get in the studio together and, and and bang them out yeah uh so this time was was jay uh, doing the bass first or the guitar first or how was that no working? so jay jay and mike normally uh track together anyway oh you do beds and then build up yeah so we oh, okay. and all usually sing uh, over those tracks as well so a lot of times like we're recording live off the floor uh with the three of us and getting those keeper tracks right okay so in this Same case process then. yeah yeah so it was just jay jay was actually just playing all of those parts on his uh on his baritone right and so it like ended up being pretty much the same like yeah, instead of one guy overdubbing guitar it's a different it's it's yeah it's another exactly. guy overdubbing guitars so yeah it was yeah. just like oh okay cool and like i had same setup we were in the same studio too working with like jp right. again yeah. so it was like okay mike's drums are gonna be here jay's gonna be set up there like same as we did on the last one so yeah, that it, must have made the transition a lot easier too right i mean yeah and yeah. jp realized that too like in you know how we were moving forward he's like let's just do the exact same thing we did on the last record that worked great we didn't run out of time like we'll just like keep kind of like moving forward like we did yeah how, how has it changed the relationship bet between the three of you in terms of you know the way a band gets along and interacts and and communicates uh i mean the th i feel like the three of us have always been really close mm. um and it's been mikey and i who have been handling like all of the like basketball records and the business stuff like um for the last last album and this one so in a lot of ways like it, none of the dynamics really like changed as far as that went um the only thing really was that we couldn't like be together so we did like all of the writing and like demoing like this like over the internet <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, uh, and but that's everybody's kind of, you know. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like, at least like some bands I knew were in the same city, so they could at least like jam throughout like and be a bubble. Right. Uh, whereas like we were all in our own separate bubbles, which in some ways was kind of nice. Like it meant there was like less pressure to like show up and more pressure to just get your own parts finished. Right. So it was like, oh yeah, if Mike's doing his drum parts at like 10 at night when his kids are asleep, like I can just like, you know, figure out the lyrics the next day while I'm like driving around in my truck, going to like dirt bike in the woods. 
So it kind of was like a really fun mm. like shift that way. Instead of us being in like a smelly, dirty, like practice space every single day, getting annoyed at each other. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing a lot of bands have told me is that the sort of uh, sort of hidden benefit of this is, is everybody gets a little more time to think about what they want to do and a little more, you know, yeah, it can obviously become an open ended process that that, you know, is, isn't worth the time. But a lot of people have seemed to enjoy the ability to sort of, you know, stretch it out a bit and, and not have to do it on deadline right now, you know? Yeah. And it, it forced us to learn how to do all those things too. Like I've been a, like a musician for like, you know, my career, but I like never knew how to even like use GarageBand. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. I got to like figure out how to like set up my microphone and like make a little like recording station at my house. And like, it's been really good to like kind of teach us like old dogs new tricks. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling like really fortunate to having had that time. So are we going to get like the, the solo acoustic uh, EP from you that yeah. you record at night now or what? I mean, we, we already did the... No, I know. Yeah. That, that yeah. was kind yeah. of like us learning how to do all that stuff was yeah. like with the acoustic stuff. So um, yeah, no no solo acoustic, <laughs> Liam. No solo uh, from you? Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you, I mean, do you play guitar or anything? I don't. I learned how to play like a little bit of ukulele. Uh, my girlfriend plays guitar and actually mm -hmm. like has like an amazing voice so we like play and like hang out and like make songs together like all the time mm -hmm. but uh yeah maybe she'll put a she'll there put you a go. record you can john and yoko it come on yeah i'll just do some like extra little bits on it <laughs> you, can you can take that cover picture of you lying naked kind of curled up around her for yeah later. yeah in the bed <laughs> <laughs> so so um so you, now you've got Stephen Harrison from Free Fever Three. Is it three 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 thirty three triple three? I never know. Three 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 is how I know it. Yeah. All right. And so we uh -huh. we knew him from when he was in the Chariot as well. So right. we toured with the Chariot back in twenty ten, mm -hmm. um, and became like really close with those guys. So what made him the the sort of uh, go to, or did you have a lot? Did you have a list of people, or or how did it work? He was already kind of top of my list. Like he's mm. like a friend who I talked to a lot. Um, and we had talked about maybe the idea that because Scott was again, like being a dad, like had his studio stuff that maybe the potential was, you know, to have more villains like we did with Wade McNeil. Right. Like I was like, Oh, maybe that's like kind of what's going to end up happening. So Stevis was one of the first people that I sort of reached out to as like a, a potential for that um and then also kind of feeling it out with like other people um but everyone was still in bands and pretty busy and like doing things Stevis is still in fever three through three but they definitely aren't as busy uh so he was just like yeah this could be super fun um okay. and then yeah when scott was like yeah i'm i'm gonna like you know step back we just i you know, I was like, oh yeah, this is your top of my list. So. Okay. So is he, is he in the band? Is he a touring guitarist? Is he a fill-in or have you even decided? We haven't, I mean, like we recorded this record as a three piece. Yeah. That's, you know, kind of like what happened for now. And I guess we'll see what the future holds. Uh, <laughs> we're going to play these first shows this weekend and I'm super excited. So okay. yeah. Is, is there an, an initiation right to, uh, bringing him in the band if it comes to that i mean it's it's funny because we love like coffee like so much and when i was like talking to him he's like oh yeah i'm, I'm like not into coffee at all and i was like oh, oh dude <laughs> i was like that's cool Sorry, it's not gonna work click and i was like well, <laughs> we're probably gonna like try and make you drink coffee we're probably gonna peer pressure you into coffee <laughs> well now you know you're truly getting old when that's your that's your initiation yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Chug this got, double double, buddy. Yeah, there's gonna be some moments in northern Ontario when we're driving to Timmins that you're gonna have to drink a Tim Hortons with us. <laughs> uh, you know, talking about about getting old, it's something you you kind of address in a couple of spots on this album. Um, you know, you're you're in your 40s. I'm guessing most of the other guys are. You've got you've got lives and, and wives and, and kids. And, and other things that you have to do and want to do aside from driving across the country in a smelly van to play all ages shows. Yeah, yeah. So how does that 
change the way you think and feel about about being in a band at this stage of your life? Um, I think it's all about balance. Like it's mm -hmm. all about figuring out that that like good balance of being excited to be on the road and like happy to play these shows and like being there and present and not pushing it too hard because we feel like it's our jobs. I right. think, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. We were really busy on spark. Um, especially for like Jay and I were the like two guys who played all the shows. Like Scott right. had some time off when he had his kid. Mikey had some time off when he had his second kid. So for us, we were like, oh, okay, like round, you know, two of this style of touring, we still need to like figure out a bit better balance. Um, just because again, we want to make sure that all the shows that we're playing are like the best shows. Like right. you don't want to be like bummed that you're away from home, you know, because you're, you've been on tour for too long. So like being really like realistic with those like amounts of time away. But I think we're we're looking pretty good. I feel like everybody's pretty up for it. Yeah, yeah, I bet. And and also, I mean, I would think at this stage too, it it can make you appreciate it more just because you're still able to do it, and and you know, yeah. you haven't broken up or or whatever, you know. It, it, and that people are still buying these tickets and right. like are still looking to come to the show. I think we feel like you know incredibly fortunate that like we've had this support for the last like 15 you know years like feels amazing like i'm yeah i'm 42 and i've been like singing in a hardcore band for like you know almost half my life like yeah. it's an amazing uh reality to actually think about yeah yeah along the same lines though now you know you're kind of you're old enough to be the dad of uh, uh, of a lot of your audience yeah how does that maybe affect the way you write songs and and what you want to say in your lyrics um i think i don't know i i definitely don't think of like uh a certain demographic you no, know but I, I mean uh, but I, I would I, say like know, I, I i want to yeah i do i do like want to be mindful of how like you know times are changing and like things that are actually like happening like around the world and to not be yeah like writing you know maybe some some things I guess yeah like I, all the songs that I write are always like reflective of like kind of what's been happening like around us at those times and like what I've been thinking about so I don't know I guess I I try to do it without it being just the perspective of like a 42 year old like I do try and think of it as like the perspective of like everyone who's going to be at these shows but I yeah. think we're I don't know for us like a lot of it is still like I guess remaining you know youthful in like what we're doing like I don't want to like be the old like kind of like guy out of gas on stage like writing songs about being bitter so, which I don't feel like we'll ever do. This next yeah. song's called Marriage is a Trap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's called Down Payment. It's about my garage. Like, you know, like those uh, kind of things. Kids would like that one from you, I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's funny. I, I guess, yeah, we try and think about things being, like, still relevant and we do like to joke like in the lonely bong video like we're old like how do we reconnect with these kids and i i think it is like a funny side of it because i mean i'll like ride dirt bikes and like skateboard with like kids and they'll you know like realize like i'm 40 and not that i'm like 30 and be like whoa that's so crazy <laughs> yeah in a lot of ways i feel like younger now like at 42 than i did when i was 30 so well you got another 10 good years left then it all starts yeah. to fall apart take it from me <laughs> i'm ripping i was i mean i was riding dirt bikes with some guys in their 60s down in baja last I week saw, yeah and they were like fully like flying and like giving us lessons and like how to like rip dirt so for me i'm like oh okay the future is still <laughs> is still There's bright <laughs> yeah yeah, but again, that's something you also reflect in, in a lot of your lyrics. Uh, you know, you're, you're often writing about perseverance, about, uh, you know, making your own way, about ignoring outside influences and, you know, staying true to your heart and your, and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
that was a lot of what's in this album too. But you you were talking about other things that were on your mind when you were writing. Were there some other uh, ideas and topics that you specifically wanted to address on this album? Yeah, I think also just being like, you know, aware of like what was happening, like kind of around mm -hmm. like the world, like tons of, you know, people talking about like social injustices and like standing up for like human rights. Like a song like Friday Night was like definitely influenced from like seeing all that and, and feeling like it was like a positive shift, that there was like a lot of like actual like, um, like movement and like action like being moved forward and like people actually starting to question some of these like social norms that like maybe they hadn't mm -hmm. and given like the fact that they weren't as distracted from like work and life they could maybe like sit down and read the book on racism that like you know was something they were meaning to do or like maybe hadn't even thought of before so I felt like a lot of that was yeah was like getting reflected in those things or even just like psychic jailbreak like I was like learning more about like you know the universe and like about like concepts of time and I was like yeah time <laughs> that one to me sounds like you were listening to a lot of Voivod oh okay yeah I feel like there's definitely some like old I wasn't listening to a lot of Voivod <laughs> but there's definitely some of those like yeah like old thrash ideas Mm -hmm. uh that I like really love when like or like old stoner kind of like stuff where like people are talking about like the universe and time and like listening to a lot of sleep I think that was okay. like my biggest thing that'd right. be like making art and listening to like sleep and like <laughs> questioning the the time vortex that we're in <laughs> what else you've been listening to lately um I actually have been like really into because I, I I've stepped up my like graphic design so I did all the art as well for this oh, record cool. nice. yeah so that was like I'd been getting more into art because of the clothing brand like Treadwell right. that I do and like learning how to use a lot of those programs so I like kind of was like I'm gonna step up and like make the art for this record and first obviously time? like what's that first time you did that this is the first time I have yeah oh, so wow, okay Every other album was done um, by Double Knot, which is like, right. originally it was like the the first bass player of Cancer Rats was Andrew, who owns this right. graphic design company. So he did everything. And then this round, I was like, you know what? Like, I'm getting pretty good at using some of these programs. I've like learned a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to like really step up and and do all the graphic design. And I knew that we had like, Cancer Bats has like a standard that like Double Knot has definitely set that mm -hmm. I had to like meet. So I really felt like I had to like kick it into high gear, which was good. It was like good pressure. But I was going to say as a result, I've like really gotten back into jazz. Oh. Um, so I just listened to like tons of jazz, like Ooh. while um, I'm like just like doing art, like again, to not have something that's too distracting or in a lot of cases like you know you're listening to like Herbie Hancock and like the songs are all like six and eight minutes long mm -hmm. um and then because of like Apple Music and you know Spotify it'll just like keep playing right. so you start off listening to Fela Kuti and then it'll like continue Thank on you. into like all this other like North African jazz so like I'll pause it and like look up the artists and then like look who like you know Ibu Taylor is and like okay I'm now I'm listening to all this so yeah I would say that's like my biggest thing has been getting into like back into jazz and like uh -huh. really listening to a lot of North African jazz oh nice uh Miles Davis oh yeah, like I love like Miles Davis and like all of that blue note stuff like mm. going back and like Thelonious Monk, Monk and, like, Mingus, yeah all that yeah. yeah all of that stuff yeah oh. Well, so Blue Note, so, but I mean, I would think Bitches Brew would be, uh, would be your jam too, though. Some, and some of it is a little like when you're trying to like work though, like <laughs> ah, okay. some of it being a little too wild. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, too okay, wild. I'm listening to a little bit more of like the cool jazz, like mellow jazz kind of. Oh, uh, okay. But I do uh, like that record's amazing. Oh yeah, no kidding. Well, I think uh, you can't go wrong with Miles kind of anywhere, yeah. I think, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, I, well, it sounds like you you would be a Chet Baker fan then if you're looking for uh, cool. Yeah, Chet Baker, Dave Brubeck, like yeah. that kind of like the oh, easy. Wow. I'm like, and then again, it's like the streaming side of things where it'll just like continue on for like right. hours, and you're just like, perfect. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> So talking about uh, about you mentioning dirt biking and yeah, I, I was looking at your social media feed and it's all pictures of you boarding and then dirt biking and um, do you do anything that is is a harder workout than singing for for two hours on stage? I mean, dirt biking is is yeah. the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Really, it's so full on physical that mm. like playing a show is like a walk in the park. It's really? like the it's so much easier to sing a show for an hour than it is to like try and hang on to a dirt bike for like six hours across the desert. <laughs> it's, okay. Six hours across the desert. I'll give you that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the wildest, like physical, cause it's engaging your entire body, mm. mind, soul, spirit. Like <laughs> you have to be all in or the consequences are very fatal. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, if I like slip at a show, I'm like, ooh, I just like fell, whatever. If I like right. slip and fall like on a dirt bike, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> right, really yeah. bad. Have you uh, had any uh, minor wipeouts or? I had a really bad crash when I was in Baja in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, I like popped my hip out of place and like tore my hamstring and like, yeah, it was really, really bad. I had to like like hobble around while we played like bad sabbath shows that year and then i had to do like a full-on like rehab to get my leg going again so yeah i'm like okay not doing that again <laughs> you got back on the bike well good for yeah, you yeah i i that's the thing like i obviously like really love this because even like crashing really hard just made me like realize i just like need to to get stronger mm -hmm. and just like okay i gotta like make my body stronger and i gotta get my skill level up and I've since like, yeah, I've been like, I rode dirt bikes like across Morocco. Like, yeah, I've had like some really great adventures from it. Nice. What's, uh, do you have something on your, on your bucket list for that? Um, I don't know. I think just like continuing to kind of have more of these adventures. I don't have anywhere like specific, like I really want to like go and try and like explore, but I, yeah, I just want to like keep doing it until I'm in my 80s for sure well best of luck with that one man <laughs> what about the band how long do you want to keep doing the band till you're in your 80s too yeah i don't know that's the like the interesting thing to think about because i mean no hardcore band even thinks they're going to make more than like two records yeah like, and, that and was, they'd be singles yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that was never even like the reality of any bands that like we kind of like grew up listening to or like seeing let alone it being like a job yeah a is career. like a, a yeah. crazy side so yeah. yeah for us i mean like as long as everybody's like still stoked to do it and like continuing like i see like you know like metallica ripping shows and it looks awesome mm -hmm. like slipknot shows are wild like it's like yeah like let's keep partying let's keep having yeah. fun yeah well i mean and the thing is now you kind of have kind of an open road ahead in terms of you know just the change in in in, in the lineup and everything that mm -hmm. you know from the from here you can kind of go in a lot of different directions that's got to be kind of exciting and and i don't know just thrilling to sort of not be locked in the same box you know yeah oh, i couldn't agree more like i feel like that's the sentiment of the band is that like now especially like knowing that our fans you know have our backs and everybody's like really up for it and like because of social media like people like really like letting us know that they're stoked mm -hmm. it's like oh yeah this is like the best and we feel like we're yeah oh yeah cancer bats can actually be anything you know at this point like moving forward yeah that's great so music uh clothing dirt biking graphic design yeah uh, what, what, what other revenue streams are you working on here? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's about, that's pretty much tapping out my, my creativity. <laughs> that's your potential. That's it. Reach. That's my potential. I'm like, that's it. If I can keep all of those things firing, mm -hmm. then we'll be good. Yeah. Well, I think that would be enough, man. <laughs> so, so last thing, and then I'll let you go. Do you know how, okay. 
you you listen to a song sometimes first time and you you you, you don't hear the lyrics right you know oh, you okay. think Hendrix is going excuse me while I kiss this guy or something you know you yeah, got one yeah, of those. Yeah. so I'm listening to the hoof okay and at the end of it you say my life was saved by a skateboard right yeah okay First time I heard it, I'm going to plant this seed in your head because once you hear this, you're not going to be able to unhear it. And I dare you to do this at shows now. I heard my life was saved by the gay porn. Oh, <laughs> I like it. I was going to say the, the story I thought of, we, we had someone come up to us at a show and they thought that the chorus to Bricks and Mortar were girls are better. And I was just like, that is way better than what <laughs> I was saying. Like my salvation, girls are better. It's there like, yeah, that one worked. 